And for more on the terrorist attack in London, we bring in director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation, Niall Gardner. Thanks for being with us on Thank this you. important day to kind of digest everything that we're learning. Um, so, you know, as we're learning more about the people that were involved in yesterday's violent attack, first, that the suspect was a convicted terrorist who had been released from prison last December wearing an electronic monitor. Now the BBC is reporting that one of the victims was a University of Cambridge graduate who was working at a conference on prisoner rehabilitation near the bridge when this happened and that the attacker, 28-year-old Usman Khan, was in attendance at that conference. So you just think about what was happening yesterday before this attack and it makes everything all the much worse. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary that uh, you have uh, a convicted terrorist who was sentenced originally uh, for, for life, actually, by, by a judge who recommended that he never be released. Uh, who was then uh, given a 16-year sentence upon appeal and then released after six years uh, and then allowed to attend a, a conference organized by Cambridge University in London on rehabilitation of, of prisoners. It's just, it's just amazing this individual was allowed on the streets of, of London and he was part of a terror cell convicted of plotting to blow up the London Stock Exchange. They also plotted to uh, to try and kill uh, Boris Johnson, who's then the mayor of London. They also plotted to uh, attack the uh, the U.S. Embassy, uh, and they also plotted to uh, create a terrorist training camp in Pakistan. And yet, uh, this this individual and and many others like him have been released on the streets uh, early, uh, and they have been free to to roam. Uh, around and calls uh, inflict terror attacks like this and something has to be done about this is a criminal justice system I think in the UK as it is uh, across much of Europe is completely uh, broken and we need to see uh, terrorists who are convicted of uh, of terrorist plots kept in jail for life they should not be released uh, and absolutely. this is an abs abs absolutely abhorrent uh, situation here something has to be done about it and the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is pledging to completely overhaul, I think, the system here and to ensure that those terrorists who are put in jail are never, are never freed from prison. It's just unbelievable as, as these details are unfolding. And our Jillian Turner uh, reporting news from a Middle Eastern wire service that the Islamic State is claiming responsibility for the attack. And as we have been you know, learning more about this, we know that he was wearing a hoax vest, explosive device looking um, contraption on his body. Your take on that? Yeah, very, very significant here. Uh, it is important to point out this particular individual, Usman Khan, was actually linked to al-Qaeda originally, but he did have close ties with a radical uh, hate preacher called Anjum Chowdhury, who was uh, sent to jail, actually, in the UK for his support for ISIS. Uh, and Usman Khan certainly was radicalized in part by Anjum uh, Chowdhury. Chowdhury himself was actually released early from prison, uh, himself, actually, which is another extraordinary uh, situation. But without a doubt, you have a very significant ISIS and al-Qaeda presence on the ground in the United Kingdom. There are an estimated 3,000 individuals, radicalized individuals, who are being uh, monitored by the police as, as citizens of, of special interest for the UK authorities. And this is a huge, massive security problem for for the United Kingdom. The threat posed by Islamist terrorists remains very grave uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, we are still engaged in a global war against Islamist terrorists who seek the destruction of the West, who seek the destruction of the free world. Uh, and this, uh, this uh, individual, uh, uh, Mr. Khan, certainly is a good example of that, someone who should have spent the rest of his life uh, in prison. And we need to have tougher policies in place in order mm -hmm. to keep these terrorists in jail uh, indefinitely. And we need to basically take the war to the terrorists. I also want to talk real quickly about the heroes of this story. Um, you know, these brave members of the public who jumped in to wrestle this guy to the ground, some using the only items they could get their hands on. A fire extinguisher was one of them. I want to show you uh, the cover of the New York Post, Everyday Heroes, talking about uh, these people that jumped into action. You know, a lot of people here in New York, uh, you know, you see something, you say something. And one of the biggest pieces of advice we all give each other is eyes up. You know, keep your eyes off your phone and look up and be aware of your surroundings. And, and kudos to these people who jumped into action. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it's very significant that the British public, not just on this occasion, but on many occasions, have stepped in uh, to take down terrorists. And then the police have swiftly moved in 
uh, immediately. And in this case, the police shot, uh, shot dead the terrorists, which was absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, but without a doubt, then the British people are willing to, to stand up to terrorists. They're going to tackle terrorists whenever they encounter them in, in London and across uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, and I think there was a great deal of bravery and heroism that we saw on the streets of London uh, yesterday afternoon from members of the public who intervened uh, to save the lives of many others. That's right. All right. Well, Niall, we want to leave it there. Thank you so much for your perspective on this today, on this important story. Much. We'll continue to bring you the very latest. Thank you, Niall.